My friends, there has never been a more divisive Marvel movie than the upcoming Captain Marvel. The reasons for this are many, and most of them are fairly obvious, having been documented thoroughly by the canon warriors and fandom menaces of YouTube. To start with, I made a video pointing out that in exploiting identity politics as a marketing hook and then trying to silence critics with accusations of sexism, Captain Marvel is in reality Ghostbusters 2.0. That smugly divisive movie cost Sony a hell of a lot of money and prestige, and yet, despite this failed propagandistic marketing approach, other studios have since followed suit, hiding mediocre films behind the skirts of that SJW version of feminism, trying to perfect the formula, lure fickle SJWs into the theater, and shout down anyone who dares to point out that this empress has no butt. I mean clothes though both are true. Brie Larson's insults to males, particularly males of light color, have been well documented at this point. In a classic display of sexism and racism, she has decided to bar some voices from her press tour in favor of other voices solely on the basis of race and sex. Brie Larson is unapologetically racist and sexist because she's discriminating against white males. And these days, discriminating against white males isn't discrimination at all. It's revenge for, I guess, the past, when none of these people being discriminated against were alive and thus had diddly squat to do with any of the discrimination they're paying for. But that's all right as the J in SJW is mere puffery, since there's no real interest in achieving the kind of social justice where no one is excluded. You know, the kind of social justice the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. fought and died for. That old-fashioned kind that wasn't virtue signaling, just virtue. Brie Larson has, in a brilliant marketing move, turned the biggest demographic in Marvel fandom against her movie. That much is true, and yet she is not the only culprit. Disney itself is continuing the Ghostbusters marketing model by including digs at men in the marketing of this film disguised as girl power. Let's show the boys how it's done. Try to keep up. Time for a her o. Oh. Crap like that in the marketing means crap like that in the very DNA of the movie. Wonder Woman, on the other hand, managed to present a female superhero without insulting male audiences. Gal Gadot's sensitive and charismatic portrayal of Wonder Woman proves that a female superhero can be elevated to greatness without standing on the backs of belittled men. But that's not the MCU's new marketing model, no. Captain Marvel is a deliberate insult to all our vanquished heroes in their darkest hour as a woman we've never seen before and don't care about enters the MCU from nowhere as its greatest hero. Talk about stolen glory. No wonder Captain Marvel is the most divisive film in the history of Marvel. Given all these insults to and assaults against the primary target audience for Captain Marvel, is it any wonder that the Rotten Tomatoes interested in seeing score plummeted to an astonishing low of just 27% for Captain Marvel? Over the course of 10 days, it plummeted so precipitously that Rotten Tomatoes stopped calculating the metric. That's right, my friends. Rotten Tomatoes has removed the button that allowed people to express their lack of interest and intention of seeing an upcoming movie, and yet they kept the interested in seeing button because that button suits the corporate interests of their masters. This continues the corporate trend across all platforms to disenfranchise fans, depriving them of ways to dissent with the corporate message being promoted by these business interests. After all, they want us to see their films regardless of how good or bad they are. Quality is a dirty word to these corporations because quality is an intangible they can't quantify on a spreadsheet. Nobody in Hollywood knows what it is because, like love, quality is an ephemeral and intangible thing. You know it when you see it, but you can't ration it and can't make it conform to a schedule. 
quality is an artistic outcome. And that's why Hollywood hates art and artists and writers who are always at the bottom of the pecking order while the soulless bean counters count beans from on high, glaring down at the unruly fans with resentment because their profits are dependent on this thing they can't guarantee and don't understand. They fear artists, fans, and the very idea of quality because they can't control these things. Though they can minimize the damage. And that's what Rotten Tomatoes has done, by eliminating this pathway for fans to express themselves. Same thing with Netflix when they changed their star rating system to a more opaque and obscure metric that conceals ratings rather than clarifying them. That's why INDB took away their discussion boards, because heaven forbid fans have the opportunity to actually discuss and analyze these films. The corporate powers that be don't want the rabble organizing and talking amongst themselves. That's why in a dictatorship free assembly is the first thing to go. And that's why they want to stop us, whenever possible, from virtually assembling on the digital commons. Clearly, Captain Marvel is contemptuous of its male fan base, inexplicably refusing to dance with the fans that brung the MCU to greatness in the first place. This much is true. But there is another way that Captain Marvel insults its fans that has not really been commented on all that much. Everyone is aware that this film is a gob of spit in the eyes of men. But what people don't seem to appreciate is how insulting this film is to women as well. Consider this. Greatness speaks for itself. It requires no defense. It springs from a place of certitude and righteousness. But all the anti-male sentiments associated with Captain Marvel reinforce a patriarchal message that women can only succeed by putting men down, as if women must insult and deride men to elevate themselves. But this is not true. Wonder Woman just presented an inspiring female hero who didn't insult or belittle anyone. She had respect for everyone she met. That respect was also heroic. That's what true superiority is, being secure in yourself, not having to dim anyone else's light in order to shine. Look at Ripley in Alien. She was a woman, but she was a hero, and she didn't have to put down her male crewmates to prove it, to look better. She got a tough job done and proved herself that way, and by her deeds did we know her. Same thing with Sarah Connor, an incredible woman who accepted male assistance until she was strong enough to stand on her own against the tyranny of the future. She trained, became a commando, but in her ultimate mission to kill Miles Dyson and stop the formation of Skynet, perhaps her most heroic moment was not one of violence, but of compassion and humanity, where she spared his life and saved her own humanity and set forth an example for her son, the future savior of Earth, John Connor. That too is strength. But it is a different kind of strength. And the SAWs reveal themselves to be tools of the patriarchy, hypocrites and fools, by proving time and time again that their image of a strong woman is as sexist as it gets. The very definition of success in these movies is offensive to women. In these movies, women are presented as being strong by embracing the most basic and primitive male virtues. Violence, being tough, being merciless, being powerful. But is that really the only relevant definition of strength? Where is the glorification of feminine characteristics? In saying that women must embody male characteristics to be considered strong, isn't this a rejection of true feminism? of women succeeding on their own terms? Isn't this presentation of women kicking ass in traditionally male ways a complete rejection of other equally valid kinds of strength? What of the feminine virtues of patience, of wisdom, of courage, of forbearance, of fortitude, and kindness and compassion? Aren't these also valuable ideals? Are these feminine traits every bit as worthy of respect and emulation as kicking ass and taking names? Shouldn't women be respected for embodying these virtues? For being feminine on their own terms? 
Why do these SJWs glorify movies that force women into being men in order to be respected? I submit to you that the SJW agenda is inherently sexist, with an innate and unspoken bias against feminine empowerment because it does not respect feminine virtues. Indeed, in creating obnoxiously masculine characters like Captain Marvel and Mikey Spock, these film properties are projecting a kind of hostility to traditional feminism, which always held as an axiom the idea that women should be free to be what they want to be. Look at Mikey Spock. You will never find a more smug and dislikable character. Star Trek Discovery is phony feminism written by sexists who believe a woman's strength is measured by how masculine she is. How violent, how crudely powerful, how obnoxious, how pushy, setting a sexist bar for young girls that is insulting and degrading to femininity. It's fine for women to be aggressive, to be physically capable, to kick ass, but stories like these seem to invariably value masculine traits over feminine traits. Basically, they're trying to turn women into men, metaphorically speaking, stating the only way for a woman to be strong is to internalize masculine standards of strength, and Doomcock finds this abhorrent. I celebrate women for the noble beings they already are. I embrace femininity for what it is, without needing to be anything but what it is, for its own sake. In affirming the fundamental tenet of true feminism, that a woman should be able to choose her path even if that path is feminine rather than masculine, and affirming that feminine virtues like compassion, patience, courage, forbearance, endurance, and perseverance are in and of themselves every bit as heroic as the masculine traits we see on the big screen. Doomcock is more feminist than Captain Marvel or Star Trek Discovery or any of this SJW crap because I value women as women and believe that women don't have to conform to anyone else's standards to value themselves. From the center of the earth, this is Dicta Van Doomcock bidding you all my friends. Stay angry.